What's up everybody, this is Tyler Stuff from Torchers Thing News, and I thought I might make another update on the studio. This is coming along good. It's a complete freaking mess in here. But other than that, it's coming along good, so I guess we'll start off with the main build. I finally souped up the Dell Precision 670. It's got enough RAM and everything to run video capture just fine. Matter of fact, video capture is more than excellent in this machine. Um, it does uh, widescreen 480p just fine, which is what the uh, cameras in the studio are what running at. So, how this works is, I've got Pinnacle Studio uh, 2013 Pro. I think it's pro. Anyhow, this is what the machine's doing. I got the video thing up here, and basically what I do is I hit import, and the video capture device runs around here to its tapes to the power strip. On the power strip, there's power going to this really old Apple II monitor, which is green and white. Basically, I'm using that as a preview out for that camera. And now, this is only going to the left channel. I have a splitter I can combine them to, but I don't have it combined. It's only mono right now, but that's okay. Um, as you can see, the video may look really, uh, it look very still and not that great, but uh, if you really look in there, besides on the LCD screen, there's little to, little to no uh, fuzzies and blurs on that. It's practically very clean video uh, 480p, so this is a very good capture rig where you did the cables. Now you might be wondering, well, where's the little, little, the little flip switch? Well, I decided that I originally wanted the studio to be a two-man operation. One person sits at the computer, listens to the audio level, see what's going on, and the other person practically does whatever he needs to do. But seeing that I'm probably going to be the only one using this, and I don't think any of my friends have really taken interest in this, I went ahead and I moved the switch right here. This switch flips over, as you can see it goes to blank there, but it flips over to the Handycam, which the Handycam wire is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Handycam plug in. This is so I have a handheld. If I ever do like computer build logs or something, which I probably will do in the near future for Geek Power. I haven't done any computer log build logs yet for Geek Power, but that will soon be a thing. I just plug it in, which I've just gone ahead and done. It won't come out in that monitor, but it will come out in that. I'll go ahead and switch over. I don't know if this will work. Aha. How's that for you? Although it comes out as wide, um, it narrows it down, but how's that for you, huh? It works pretty darn good. You can swap back over. So I was live streaming with this the other day, and I noticed I was running into some massive bottlenecks with the uh, system you see down there. And she, yeah, that was actually because of uh, internet bandwidth. Um, the CPU on that thing was relatively running high, but it was at the point where it could stream, but the system was seizing, was not uploading the files correctly. There was a bottleneck somewhere in the network I had. The system hooked up to the switch, so if I ever want to do a live stream, I'm going to have to plug that thing in directly to the modem. And as you can see, there's me. Very clear as day. I'll go ahead and yeah, just look at that though one last time. I, w I have the TV hooked up up there. That's actually hooked up to the to this computer. So if I wanted to, I could display a third preview on there for the main display, but it doesn't seem to work right because Nvidia does some weird things with their uh, eight, GeForce 8800 cards, or to the point where you can't use more than three monitors, and it's really annoying. I'll unplug here. Now this, I pretty much just leave this cable right here. And let me show you what I mean by this thing can't really want, it doesn't want to display. Oh, it's not even plugged in. Uh, should I? Hold on, I gotta put the camera down for this. 
But yeah, I'm going to be using this PC to edit all my videos, most likely. And a lot of people might be thinking, oh, why don't you use your Dell Precision T3400? It's got way better, especially, I have Adobe on here. Adobe Premiere. And Adobe Premiere is going to run like crap on this system because Adobe Premiere is actually graphics-based. And therefore, you need a decent GPU, which I've, I, I guess I got a decent, I got a more than decent GPU for the time that this thing was made in. But then again, that's for that time period. Here we are, years ahead. Um, I don't know if this GPU is really going to perform to anything. Okay, so it comes up and let me show you this. I can do this. Oh, that's not it. I'm going to do this. Ta-da! I can do that, and I can display the projector up there. See, so I, if I really truly wanted to, I could take the capture window right here, and I could just stick it right there, and you'd be able to see a live preview, which is a decent way of doing things. Not a decent way in my book, though. A duplicate, though, it takes... It, this is really weird. This card does not want to cooperate with me. This video card just, like, likes to have seizures. Extend. And what I want to do is I want to duplicate monitor 1 on there, but whenever I try, being that this is a PCI video device, or not PCI, but S video device, I don't know if it'll actually let me do it. If it lets me do it, I'm going to be kind of annoyed. Um... See, unable to save display setting, which is honestly fucking dumb. That honestly really annoys me because, like, this card, you would expect for its time being the top dog card at the time, that it would at least have a feature where it can use more than two monitors. It's definitely got enough power for it. So, yeah, that's just something NVIDIA did and then they screwed up on. I have a Quadro card that could probably, uh run on this, but the Quadro card needs a new heatsink and some new thermal paste and all that crap, and I don't have the money or the time to put into that. And the camera turned off, but yeah, I don't really have much to say. I, I could show you what Adobe CC runs like on this machine. It's nothing less of a miracle that it runs nicely. Or not Adobe CC, but just Adobe Premiere Pro 2015. It definitely does take a while. The system is actually running really smooth, as you can tell. This the system really just does not break a sweat um, when it comes to when it comes to rendering. This thing, rendering in Premiere mainly requires GPU, so this system might not render nowhere near as fast as my Precision T3400 does. Because my Precision T3400 has two pretty decent GPUs in it as this thing's got one really, really monstrous overheating, overclocked monstrosity that, although may perform very well for its time, it's still not ideal for modern, modern video-based applications where it could, uh, like, it games and everything. I can get about 50 to 60 frames out of it in Minecraft with uh, max settings without Optifine, to mention, at 12 render distance, so... There is something to keep in mind there. As you can see, it is registered. This isn't a trial. So, as you can say, new project. And, I don't know. It just runs nicely to, to an extent. I'm probably going to edit this video on this machine. Oh, that's what I mean to an extent right there. Because this machine has a very poor hard drive in it, it does some interesting we weird stuff. And this system does not have that much RAM installed on it. That is going to be a future project because these Dell Precision 670 machines take the oddest type of RAM you'd ever imagine. It takes 100... Uh, no, no, hold on. It takes DDR2 ECC, I believe, 333 megahertz. If it's nothing... If it's anything more than 400 megahertz, it'll not accept it. Uh, the way that the slots are... Uh, there's six slots in here. I've actually gotten this machine. I've, these machines are capable of upgrading to 16 gigs of RAM, which is actually unbelievable. It's actually pretty funny. I have upgraded these machines to 16 gigs of RAM before. Uh, not this one, but a different one. The one I 
used to own as my main PC. This one's just a one, a spare P one I have laying around. Nowhere near as good as the other one I had, or before I had to replace the uh, seat motherboard because of the capacitors going bad. Um, yeah, there's not really much to talk about here. The system runs okay, I guess, to an extent. Um, oh, I guess I can't do that with this version. Oh, that really sucks. Anyhow, it works fine. This is an interesting decoding setup, and for me, it seems to just do what I need it to do, and that's all I really need, to be honest with you. And also, that TV, I don't know if I have the remote. Oh, I do have the remote down here. This TV not only, uh... Not only uh, displays stuff, but it's also, um, I don't know if this is the remote. It probably is. But it appears it is. Now, this TV also gets cable. I decided, screw it, I put a cable in this thing. Oh, my favorite show's on. Anywho, yeah, the, the TV's an old RCA TV, but, uh, I don't use it much. The only time I really use this is maybe if I'm uh, working down here in the multimedia lab. Like, a lot of the times, me and my friends have, like, LAN parties down here. And, uh, matter of fact, there is upon a time where I actually clean the basement out for these parties. And essentially what happens is, I, I actually am short some computer monitors. I had some uh, Dell flat panel monitors, 4x3 flat panel monitors, but I sold them, and I'm kind of regretting that, because even though I needed the extra cash, I don't have any extra monitors for those Dells over there. Except for that thing, that's just a little piece of shit desktop that I use to grab drivers when uh, the other machines are too far away, but, um, yeah, basically, with, we used to have computer monitors all back there, and we'd basically hook up, like, four desktops to those computer monitors, and we'd have a LAN party down here, and some, and then I don't have the drop downs anymore. But I'd set up a temporary desk over here, and we'd or not over here, but like I think over there, and we'd set up the uh, laptops for anyone that has a gaming laptop. And pretty much we just clear out the area, and we just lay down. What we do is we lay down uh, sleeping bags. We put like a bunch of blankets down on the ground so it's not freezing. Lay down sleeping bags, and we watch TV before we go to bed. So that's why the TV's there, and that, and I also watch some videos while I'm editing. Uh, so far I've edited a couple of videos on this system. Um, it's not impressive, but it gets the job done. Uh, like I said, if I had a... For Premiere... See, Pinnacle Studio renders like nothing, that's for sure. Because this machine's got more than enough power for rendering and Pinnacle Studio. Because Pinnacle Studio is more of a, an application that needs more clock speed than cores. And Premiere is kind of an application that needs more cores and, a, and an extremely good graphics card to render fast. Uh, that's just how Premiere is. It's always been like that. Um, Premiere is all frontside bus, PCIe, and, and beyond. It, it really has nothing to do with CPU. Uh, but it is nice to have multiple cores and to render stuff in Premiere because it just makes it a tab faster, you know? And this system is a Prescott-based, or... It's a Prescott-based, or no, maybe not a Prescott. Yeah, it is a Prescott. It's a Prescott-based Pentium 4 Xeon system. So there's dual, there's dual single-core processors in there. Each one of those single-core processors being hyper-threaded. And let me say, hyper-threading helps a lot when it comes to this system. And this system's running Windows 7. The, this system's pretty old. It was from 2001. And at the time being, these systems were about $3,000. They were not cheap. These multiprocessor systems were the top of the line you could possibly get out of any computer manufacturer, or at least from Intel. I believe the Power Mac G4, the dual power processor Power Mac G4, pretty much blew these things out of the water, which is kind of funny. But um, these machines were pretty much the top dogs at the time. They, they were untouchable when it came to performance. These things just freaking blew everything away. I, used, I actually owned five of these, and I don't own that much anymore, but they, I'm just rambling on at this point. But yeah, thanks for watching, comment, subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment if you have one. I'll probably make another video of, or maybe make like a video of how long, like a time lapse of this thing actually rendering the video, because uh, Pinnacle Studio does it pretty quick, and Premiere takes, but... I, I probably will stick like an NVIDIA GT610 or I have a couple of GT610s. You could probably stick one in there. 
The reason why I don't want to do it is because I want to have the TV to be able to use. I want to S video output. But I've been rambling on enough, so thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. What's up, everybody? Uh, one last thing before I go. Obviously, you can see the overall audio quality and video quality of this uh, little thing here. Now, there is one thing that sucks about this. The uh, microphone is up here, for one. Second off, because it's up there, if I look straight up to it, you might notice it's louder. If I look straight down, it's not as loud. Um, this is just a thing that happens, you know. Nothing you can really worry about. This is my version of a Sky Mic. That's going to work for me fine until I can actually get a Sky Mic. But until the meantime, that's fine. It, it has good noise reduction. If I look straight up to it and talk, as you can see, it comes out just fine. But, um... I'm probably going to have to boost up the gain and the uh, video to try this, but you can definitely see one thing. For a 1980s camera, for a very high-end 1980s camera, oh my god, my video is stuttering. What the hell? Why is my video stuttering? I have entirely no idea what that was about, but moving on, uh, you can definitely see that the audio quality is pretty darn good. It's uh, working pretty nicely, and although it might be a little bit quiet, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, just wanted to show you this. Obviously, some people might think it's total crap. That is true. Uh, before I go, though, I'll show you first person view. Let me just get my stupid Sony handy cam here. It's a uh, handy cam, as I call it, or the way Sidney Bill calls it. In here. Because if I just go straight to the video output, of course, there's not going to be anything to see. There we go. And uh, switch the camera input. You can obviously see that although my uh, audio is the same, the uh, little switch there and everything else is pretty much different. So I figured some people might want to see that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.